onboarding. They need to meet their supervisor. They need to meet their mentor. And your job is to make them part of your tribe. Hmm. Let's talk about the first part, meet their supervisor. Who are they reporting to? They need to know that. They need to know the chain of command. They should be introduced on the very first day. Here's your supervisor. The supervisor should introduce them to other people. You need to walk them around so they know what the chain of command is. The second thing they need to do is they need to meet their mentor. You need to assign someone who's going to help them onboard for the first two weeks in particular. In the good old days, when I started working at a shop, our way of onboarding people was to treat them like crap. It was called the pecking order. I remember when I started out as a tech before all you kids were born, all the old techs told me, hey, go get me a left-handed crescent wrench. And then they wanted a left-handed hammer. Then they wanted a metric crescent wrench. And I spent all this time trying to find this. One guy said he needed a sky hook to help pull an engine. I'll never forget. I looked all day for that stupid thing. Those days are done. Today, when you get somebody, you've got to make them feel part of the team. You've got to make them feel appreciated or you're going to lose them. So we need to hire mentors where this mentor kind of comes alongside. Hey, let me show you the ropes. Let me show you around. Ideally, the mentor is going to eat lunch with them every day for a week, maybe two weeks. Mentor is going to just kind of talk about the history, make sure they're doing okay. This is critical. If you want the employee to succeed, you need to give them a mentor, even if they're an ASC certified super tech, because they may have the skill set, but they don't know the ropes. They don't know your organization and they don't have the emotional connection yet. The last part, make part of your tribe. So let's talk about the people that are the world's best at it, the military. One thing I want you to notice in this photograph, one of the things that the military does to make you part of the tribe is you enter boot camp, they take away your hair, they take away everything that relates you to the outside, and you go through a lot of trials together and you develop reliance on one another and you go through all kinds of crazy stuff. They put you under stress, you learn to rely on one another, and if you pass that, then you get to wear the insignia of that particular group and you're part of that tribe. Notice that these medals and these patches and even the way you wear the uniform and the way the uniform looks is designed to bond us together. Humans by nature want to bond together in tribes. I think it comes from ancient history when to survive, you need a group of other people. And that's just the natural limbic part of our brain, the core part of our brain that says, to survive, I need to be connected to somebody. Just to show you how powerful this is, who's your favorite football team? Green Bay. So you take a bunch of Green Bay Packer fans, put them all together, put them in Green Bay Green. They're all drinking Spotted Cow, which is the official beer of the great Wisconsin area, eating cheese curds. And then you put them with a whole bunch of Vikings fans that are all drinking something that's non-spotted cow because you can't buy that in Minnesota. And they're all eating tater tots because a good Vikings fan would never be caught dead eating uh, cheese curds. That's them Packers stuff. What kind of results would happen if you got these people drunk and got them together? Besides being fun to watch? (laughs) Yeah, well, tell me what would be fun to watch. They're going to fight each other. It just comes down to that. It's amazing how you can literally just put clothing on someone and it'll change their behavior. It will totally change how they associate with one another. So let's talk about that from your perspective. Do you give your people uniforms? Yes. Why? To make them part of the group. Do you talk about the uniform code of conduct of how to wear the uniform and what it means to the company and what it means to be able to wear the uniform? Not at their prior service, because they already know. Okay. But let's talk about in your shop. Let's say they're not military. You're hiring some young kid, some Gen Z, who has no connection to anything. And it's not their fault. They haven't been raised with that. How do you teach them that when you put on my uniform, that means you're representing me, you're representing our company, you represent all of us. This is how you wear it. This is what it means. Do you have those conversations? Can I submit to you that you should, for example, if you're giving them shirts that have button downs. Now, I don't wear button downs usually, but if you look here, you have these button down jackets on these military folks. They even teach you in the military what a gig line is. The gig line is the buttons on the jacket and the shirt have to line up to the zipper on the pants and the belt buckle has to be in the right position because it creates a line that's straight. It's called the gig line in the military. That stuff matters. Even the tie and how you wear the tie matters. How you wear the hat matters. If you're in sales, first thing you learn if you're dealing with the females is the shoes and the belt buckle better be complementary. Typically, you want them to match. 
And these are all things that we need to kind of teach our people about the pride of wearing the uniform. It's not, hey, put this on and go work on stuff. It's, hey, we're welcome you to part of our tribe or welcome you part of our team. We'd like you to be part of our family long term. This is what our family wears. So every great tribe, if you look throughout human history, what bonded people together, whether it was the Romans, a tribe of Indians, whatever, they first of all had stories they share in common. Remember the time we did this, and you want to include the new people in on those stories. You want to tell them those stories. Very important. It can even be, hey, we had this problem car, we sold it, the customer loved it, but you need to have stories, and that's where the mentor is going to share that. You need to have symbols. Symbols are things that they wear that bond them to you. I never forget when I actually went to work at a shell station. I walked in with a Craftsman toolbox. I'm just out of tech school. And they told me I had to get a snap-on toolbox in the first 30 days. All the techs were like, dude, we're not even going to have this in the shop. I've met techs that are snap-on or Matco or whatever, everything. They even wear jackets. They're proud of their boxes. And that's a way of symbolizing that you're connected to either that particular shop or you're connected to this industry. One thing's for sure, if a guy came in with a bunch of Buffalo brand tools and a fishing box, I'm not feeling that guy is probably a master tech. Could be wrong, but it doesn't feel like he's made that long-term commitment to the industry. Those things are external symbols and you want to use that to bond them to your tribe. So throw out some things you guys use to help make them feel part of the tribe when they wear something that makes them feel part of your team. Hats. Hats are good. Do you have a standard for how those hats are worn? Probably not like a punk. <laughs> well, okay. I like the term probably, but have we actually had the, here's what our brand means. Here's what all the blood and sweat and tears we put into this brand. You're going to be wearing our brand. When you're wearing the brand, here's how we'd appreciate you wearing the hat. Maybe your thing is visor forward. Maybe when they're working underneath the car, they take it off. Maybe they leave it on and they put the visor back or whatever, but have you ever talked about the standard for doing that? I see adults all the time pick on kids in middle school and high school saying, oh, these kids don't know how to dress. Well, yeah, they don't. So somebody needs to tell them. And that's part of our job is to help them understand that. You want to teach them about the honor of wearing your uniform because they're representing you. Because think about this. What if they're at the grocery store and they're wearing your uniform and it's filthy? Eh, that may cause consumers to go, hmm. Or what if they're at the grocery store and they're wearing your uniform and they just cut somebody off and they're incredibly rude to them or they cuss them out? Would that impact that consumer's opinion of your company? It's important we talk about our brand, our standards, let these people know who we're all about. How many of you guys have sweated blood and tears to get your business going, to put your brand out there, to make yourself known in the community? You put your life on the line every day for the business. You want to make sure your people honor that brand. If you hire right and you teach people this, they're actually going to like it. They're going to appreciate it. They'll hold other people accountable. That's where the mentor comes in. One thing that a lot of manufacturing companies do is you're not even allowed to wear a name tag or the company brand until you've been there 90 days. Which kind of says, hey, you got to make it 90 days to become part of the tribe. May not work for you, but you want to make it harder. This last thing is rituals. Every organization that has ever had people bond together has some kind of ritual. Let's go back to one of the oldest rituals known to man. You'll find it in the Bible. It's called the covenant of blood. Most of the ancient cultures did this. You'll see it sometimes on TV, Clint Eastwood movie, he cuts his hand and the Indian cuts their hand and they put them together and like that. That's a mingling of blood, makes them blood brothers. In ancient cultures, they used to cut up cattle or some kind of animal and they would walk between the blood and that would make them blood brothers. It's a ritual. In the Boy Scouts, they had something called the Order of the Arrow, where if you got that, you were able to be on a higher level, or you got to become an Eagle Scout. Do you guys have anything like that where you celebrate? Maybe someone's been here a month, and now you do a celebration. Or maybe they've been here 90 days, you do some kind of celebration. It doesn't have to be a big deal. You know, Maybe just you're having lunch. Hey, I just want to thank you. you know, Jim, you've been here for 90 days. We love you, man. You've been a great member of the team. They get the impression that they have a status change. They're more part of the group and everybody else kind of celebrates that. If you're not, you're missing a huge opportunity to bond people to you because that's what bonds people to you. Most people say I was in the army and I respect their service. You talk about people in the Air Force, they'll say I was in the Air Force and I respect their service. You'll talk about people in the Coast Guard, I was in the Coast Guard, I respect their service. You'll talk about people who are in the Navy, I was in the Navy. And you ever talk to a Marine? There's no such thing as a former Marine. You will never hear someone say, 
I was a Marine. They always say, I am a Marine. If you ever graduate from boot camp and you actually become a full Marine, you're a Marine for life in your brain, in your blood, protect the Corps. You'll see these people where they even have the Marine Corps stickers on the back of their car. They've got them all kinds of stuff. Why? Because they bonded with that organization. So that's your goal. Make them part of your tribe. Most shop owners don't do this. And as a result, you hear a lot of bitching and whining and everything else, because if you don't make people feel connected together, they will tend to start to pick each other apart. 